Did you know the average human goes through 26 pairs of pants a week? Scientists believe this anomaly is caused by a buildup of excess money in the pocket region, which if left unattended can rapidly rise in temperature, eventually burning through the pockets. Surely there must be a convenient place to put all of our money to prevent this from happening. Don't worry, Japan has the answer. Crane machines. Well, they're technically called UFO catchers, but crane machine seems more to the point. It's not uncommon to find entire floors dedicated to nothing but these coin eaters. It's all the fun of a casino without the risk of accidentally making your money back. And as an added bonus, there are a variety of prizes to play for. Plushies, pricey anime figurines, food, keychains, desire, temptation, radiation, antlers, white blood cells, arson, mainly plushies though. You might think they're all rigged, and you'd be right, but the trick is finding one that's less rigged than the others. The second trick is a total lack of willpower. I don't know why anyone would need a miniature folding chair, but that's not gonna stop me from spending my life savings trying to get one. Now, welcome to day four of pretending I know anything about Japan. Today's game is actually the first entry in one of my favorite franchises, the original Rhythm Heaven. It's also the most expensive game I bought, coming in at almost 2,000 yen, about $18. I briefly considered getting the boxed version, but it was almost double the price. That's money I could be spending on crane machines. This is actually the only game in the series that never released outside of Japan. There's an arcade adaptation as well that's pretty hard to find nowadays. But is this version still worth playing after experiencing the most recent games? Let's find out. There are a ton of reasons why Rhythm Heaven stands out from other rhythm games, but it all comes back to one thing, simplicity. You only ever need to use a few buttons at a time, and there aren't any flying notes to keep track of. In most cases, you probably don't even need to look at the screen. All you need is your ear holes and a beat in your heart, and a Game Boy Advance, and fingers. But not looking at the screen would be a huge disservice to the amazing visualizers that accompany every track. Whether you're grooming an onion with tweezers or re-killing ghosts, each level keeps you hooked from start to finish. The animations do a great job of guiding you through each stage. However, the game also occasionally throws a visual curveball into the mix to make sure you aren't over-relying on your eyes. It's extremely satisfying to do well, while messing up feels like a slap in the face. There's no greater disappointment in life than being side-eyed by a group of disco monkeys. After every five levels, you unlock a WarioWare-style remix that incorporates all the previous mechanics you've learned into one fancy new track. Some of the better ones even change up how the games look, but it does make the other remixes seem sort of bland in comparison. Simply clearing every level shouldn't cause much of a problem to most players. Unlocking all the side games, on the other hand, requires at least partial mastery of most songs. And if you hate yourself, you can try to earn a perfect medal by clearing a song without a single screw-up. This game in particular has the same great qualities of its predecessors, with one small exception, content. They pretty much nailed the gameplay on the first try, and used sequels to simply add more of what people liked. More stages, more involved visuals, more side games, meaning that this game has less of everything in comparison. That said, in my opinion, it's still worth playing for the exclusive content. A couple of things you can only do in this game are train penguins, experience Japanese culture, and transform children using trampolines and furry magic. The side games and toys are mostly different as well. You can even unlock lessons that teach you how to play drums, which probably gives you more training than most people with drum kits. I really don't have enough positive things to say about this game, and the series in general. If you've never played any of them, what are you waiting for? I mean, it's not like you have anything better to do. Why else would you be here? Anyway, subscribe if you want, thank you for watching, and I'll see you on day 5.